Welcome to Morning Call for Thursday, the 11th of July, 2019. I'm Fab from Hamburg and uh, this is your tech news. And we actually, we do have some tech news today. It's amazing. Um, thanks to Nintendo for actually <laughs> providing us with some news in this slow summer time. So um, yeah, let's, let's get right into that. Um, how are you doing? I'm Fab. I don't know if I said this already, might have, anyway, better introduce yourself twice than not at all. Hope you're having a good day. So yes, Nintendo. Nintendo has um, announced the Switch Lite, which uh, is going to hit the market in September. It's basically a slightly small, smaller Switch that um, doesn't have the ability, uh, where, you know, where the Switch has the two controllers, uh, the Joy-Cons, which you can... Um, remove from the console and then put the console uh, in a dock and use it with your TV uh, and then, you know, use the Joy-Cons to control it. It doesn't have that functionality. It's just one continuous console. So you can, it, it doesn't have a dock. You can only use it on the go. The screen is a little bit smaller and the buttons are a bit different, um, but it's, it's basically going to support all the games that are already on the Switch. So stuff like uh, Zelda and Mario Kart um, and Mario Galaxy, which are uh, Mario Odyssey, I'm sorry, which are big uh, hits. And um, yeah, you can actually also, if you have Joy-Cons, um, you can pair them via Bluetooth. Um, or you could just, I guess, buy some Joy-Cons. Um yeah, so uh, pretty pretty cool, um, pretty interesting. So basically, a switch just for people who wanna wanna play on the go, which I think is a big market for the switch. It's gonna cost around two hundred euros, they're saying. Um, <laughs> Seven of Nine says, remember, "Remember, on a slow news day, you can always run a Hitler story, Hitler's secret Kickstarter campaign." <laughs> it sounds like something that would run like in German television late at night, you know. Uh, Hitler's assistance, Hitler's Kickstarter, Hitler's biggest Kickstarter successes. Um, yeah, so that Switch thing looks cool. This presentation looks a bit lame. They've got nice colors. Uh, space gray, as Apple would call it. Some uh, turquoise and uh, yellow. I like the yellow. I had a Game Boy... Um, advance in yellow. Was it Game Boy Advance still have it? Um, so yeah, I, I actually uh, I've I've wanted to switch for ages. I think I'm finally getting one. Uh, really, really want to have one. So uh, I uh, told people I really want to have one for my birthday. So hopefully uh, I'll have a switch soon. I I am gonna. I, I really want the original version. But the mobile one looks cool. Um, looks like it's a bit more. Um, just a bit more, just, it's just a tiny bit smaller from this video, but that seems to make a b b big difference, you know, like with mobile phones, sometimes they're just a bit smaller, but still it feels like a lot. Um, so cool. Um, really cool to, for Nintendo. I mean, I've, I've been, I've been happy to see them having success with the switch and following up makes sense. Um, 
Halifa says, what would he, uh, as in Hitler, try to kickstart a, a new awesome tank? Yeah, like um, that, that Tauwitzer train or like maybe, a, a, you know, the, the, the flying saucer. The Nazi flying saucer. Stuff like that, you know. Supplies for the Ostfront. Although that would be more like a GoFundMe, I'm guessing. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Dropbox has also announced something. It's, it seems now we had nothing for ages, and now it's all coming, coming together. Um, Dropbox announced a new service called Dropbox Transfer. It, it's well, to be honest, not that exciting. It seems to be something like basically a we transfer ripoff. It's basically the same functionality. You can, if you want to send people files like via email or something, you know, if you don't want to attach it to the email, um. Or, you know, stuff like that, like on the messenger. Um, you can actually send it to people who do not have a Dropbox account. So that's interesting. Uh, 709 says, Mein Kampf 2, this time it's personal. Um, you might want to look that up. There are, is actually a second version of Mein Kampf that he did write that was not as successful as the first book. Uh, but it actually has two parts. So it would, it would be uh, Mein Kampf 3, Electric Boogaloo or something. Um, or maybe he would kickstart that dinosaur, you know, from, uh, from Steel, uh, what was it, uh, 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 what's that, the, the movie, the second movie that's coming out, shit, what's the movie called, the, the Steel, 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 something, Iron Sky, Iron Sky, that's it, I knew I, I would remember it eventually, uh, yeah, so, uh, Dropbox, new Dropbox thing. Um, bear with me here for a second. I'll have to, I'll have to figure something out. My camera is kind of like switching itself off all the time. And I, oh yeah, I, I clicked the checkbox that I shouldn't have been clicking. So, okay, fix that. Um, Apple has pushed a silent update for the, uh, for the operating. Well, it's not really an update. It's more like an antivirus definition. Um, you know, talked about that zoom, um, vulnerability and they're basically deinstalling that web server according to TechCrunch um, Zoom said um, we're happy to have worked with Apple on testing this update although before they had said they didn't want to change that the fact that like the web server stays installed on your system when you uninstall the software so I'm not uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know if I'm buying this <laughs> 7 of 9 says my comfort three Goebbels gonorrhea <laughs> oh god uh, that 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 would be a comp uh anyway yeah so there apple has the installed a web service probably probably for the best um the so this is a it's not really tech news but i found this it's right it's space technology so i guess it counts um it's on all the tech sites um golem report reporting reporting Golem is reporting that a, the um, Ariane Group, European Space Consortium, has lost a Vega rocket. It was the 15th launch of a Vega rocket and the first crash. And I found this interesting because um, they were transporting the military satellite Falcon I-1 for the United Arab Emirates. Now... Um, Am I the only one that finds it weird that that is uh, exactly the rocket that then crashed? Oh my god, I just realized something as well. I also have the, for, uh, the wrong date on the stream display. Why don't people, why don't you tell me this? People, pay attention. If I'm not paying attention, it's like, it's like this dearth of tech news is just making... This is just making it all very difficult. Anyway, just fix that now. So good. Should should update immediately. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, so they lost that rocket. That was that was the only rocket they lo they lost. Um, also, Golem uh, talking about the story. Uh, actually, interesting. Um, we trust in you. You say it's April fourth, nineteen thirty three. We believe in that. <laughs> this, okay, good to know. <laughs> Maybe I can use that at some point to my advantage. <laughs> it is it, it is 1943. 
die Ostfront ist fein. Um, as interesting as Golem was watching the livestream, apparently they're writing about this, how, how basically um, they were going, they were reading the script, like everything's fine and they had like the telemetry um, that was still like, you know, the, the pre-computed telemetry. It's like everything's fine, the booster has, has fired and in reality actually the rocket was uh, <laughs> was crashing. But uh, then you could actually see the telemetry, but like the reader, like the the the, the guy uh, commentating was still reading from the script. Oh, it's it's, it's great. Um, everything's fine. And then it crashed. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Some action in the chat. That's actually quite cool. Yes. So um, they lost the uh, the lost in air quotes the uh, United Arab Emirates. So I'm I'm I don't know. I don't want to spread conspiracy theories, but. Uh, I think people should, the UAE should look into that. That seems a bit suspicious. Um, interesting thing I, I saw this morning also, um, Torrent Freak uh, reporting on the fact that, you know, there's lots of web, web rips turning up. So basically uh, pirated uh, TV shows and movies from Amazon and Netflix. And uh, they have like the story where they have a source uh, supposedly in the higher echelons of like the groups you know, these release groups uh, pirating this material. And apparently they have cracked the, um, or they can crack the copy protection. Um, seems to be Google's white wine that is mostly being used for this. And they are basically running service with scripts and legitimate accounts. Like they have premium accounts for like Netflix and stuff. And they will have scripts that automatically download these um, files which goes is pretty fast you know because they're served by big beefy cdns and then uh, have systems and software that can apparently they've reversed engi reverse engineered the drm and they crack the drm and then um pirate the material which is interesting which um would explain why there is i mean there's a lot of web rips that that have been turning up uh, recently and they always very f soon after you know the stuff comes onto the streaming services so that would explain explain that um very interesting of course the uh streaming services would not cop to this i'm guessing um, they would, I think, silently work to improve the DRM. They don't, they don't want people to know that you can get like the stuff for free somewhere on the web. Um, yeah. Uh, and the last story I have is uh, several German news outlets reporting on um, a change in open. Uh, in no, I think actually GNU PG, um, where basically PGP is having this has had this problem for a while that the key service, the automatic key service, um, people have been uploading keys or, you know, PGP works like this. You have a, you have a key and they have this web of trust. So if you know me, you can sign my key and upload that to the, to the key service. And you can't delete those keys. Like, if you download my key, sign it and upload it again, I can't delete that. And the problem is um, people have been signing these keys, downloading keys, signing them with hundreds of other keys and then uploading it again, which um, the client-side software like uh, like NewPG can't deal with. If you download a key like that, it might just DDoS, uh, not DDoS, the denial of service uh, your client because your client can't deal with that. Now, um, because of that, GNU PG has switched to um, to ignoring those, just downloading the key, ignoring the sign, the basically the signed information um, per default, which solves this problem with people like spamming those keys. But it also, as for example, Heise, uh, right, Jürgen Schmidt on uh, from Heise Security writing here. Um, basically kills the web of trust because that is how you, you know, how the whole key signing, the whole key signing worked. I mean, that that's how you could be sure that you downloaded my PGP key because it was signed by other people, you know, and if they're disabling that by default, 
then there's basically no way to be sure of that key. Um, they're just disabling, well, just disabling that for um, signings from servers. So if you import a key manually, say from USB stick, um, you know, public key that that was signed, it is not ignoring that because you're manually importing that. Um, and um, it basically you can check that before importing it so that it wasn't signed by 100,000 people and crashes your system. Um, yeah, but basically that's the that's not the use case, right? The use case is I, I want to write a journalist, for example. Um, I check their key on a key server to see if it's their key and then, you know, see see who signed it. And basically that's that's going to be that's going to be phased out. So the web of trust basically doesn't work. So basically, I mean, I, th I think that means PGP is dead. Um, I mean, Schmidt talking here about that, of course, there's also the other use case uh, for PGP with, with like, you know, signing software, although that, you know, it's used, he's, he's correct in that it's used more for that, but that's not right. Really the reason why PGP was designed, right? It was designed for email. And I mean, there's other technologies for that use, and it's like, yeah, great. If if it's still being used for that, that's okay. But like, we know uh, PGP basically as as service to encrypt emails, and if the web of trust is not there anymore, I think you can't use it for that anymore. It, it feels to me like PGP is now finally dead. I mean, it was always basically just that man, that technology walking because. <sighs> You know, uh, basically nobody was using it. Some open source geeks, some crypto geeks were using it, but it wasn't was never mainstream technology. So it seems like it's it's officially pretty much dead now. Um, so yeah, that's a bit sad, but it's that's just the way it goes. Um, and that's that's it for today. Um, still, not much happening. Um, Maybe maybe if this keeps going on, I will have to actually make up Hitler fake Kickstarter news. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, uh, thanks for the suggestion. Um, it is it is definitely an, an option. <laughs> I'm going to consider. Um, anyway, I hope you ha you have a good Thursday. It is Thursday, the 11th of, of July. Um, now also with the right uh, image there on the screen. And I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully for some more tech news. Hopefully something will happen. Um, until then, have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>